Well, good day, guys. I'm here with Loke Tan. How are you, Loke? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. I see you in uh, lots of countries, but never Australia. I think I see you in Malaysia, Europe, America. Yeah, that's funny. I, I was in Australia three years ago when right. they had tech at, but not this year, unfortunately. Okay, yeah. cool. Well, you know, I want to talk to you about that robot of yours. Okay. What's its name? His name is Robo Razi, as in paparazzi, but robot. Right. Paparazzi, yeah. Okay. All right. So it looks very, very cool, and I saw it taking lots of photos last mm -hmm. night. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. So uh, tell me, to get that up and running, what's uh, behind it? Oh, so the brains obviously is powered by a, CP, uh, a laptop, a Windows machine. Yes. Uh, you can use an x86 board, or you can use a laptop or a slate. But we use your laptop right on the top of the, uh, the, the device. The base itself is a um, device that a, a partner of ours called Parallax sells. It's called Eddy. So if you go to parallax.com slash Eddy, you see that that's, they sell that base. So we buy that base, we remove the top disk, and we build some scaffolding using 8020 beams and nuts and screws to bring the camera up high and the, and the laptop up high so they'll interact with uh, adults much better. And that's why we did And we use a Canon T3i digital SLR camera to get that picture quality that we needed. And the navigation capabilities is powered by two connects. One, a forward-facing connect to look for skeletal structures and identify individuals and then hone in on a person and triggers the camera to take a picture. Then there is a bottom downward-facing connect that looks on the ground in front of it to see obstacles. And it's very accurate. It can actually detect small obstacles like a pen or a cable and you'll be able to avoid it. So I noticed that it was smart enough to not even go off the, off the ledge. Uh, yes, in my talk, right? We yes. saw it. Uh, we had a stage that was like four feet high, I think. And it was. It went really close to the edge, and it started to turn around, and it was like a centimeter from the edge. Right. And it's smart that way. You can actually see the and turn. Right. So if I'm a developer and I want to get this up and running, it's not expensive. It's six hundred bucks for the uh, the Canon. Correct. Uh, well, camera. What camera? Yeah. You can but, put a one D there. And it costs yes. you like three thousand. I guess you could go with the computer from the. You could go with the webcam and yes, it costs nothing. Yes. Right. So. 600 bucks for a great camera with a nice lens. Mm -hmm. You've got the Connect, which Correct. is 150 bucks. 150 bucks. Okay, so a couple of those. Yep. And then you've got the, uh, the PC, Correct. say, if, if we get a Windows Surface. You know. I don't know how much it's going to cost. Okay, but let's just say <laughs> 600 bucks. Yeah, let's just say 600 bucks. Okay, and then there's the, um, the Paral Parallax. Parallax, yeah. And how much Eddie. is that? Eddie costs uh, 1,200 US dollars right. just for the base and um, motors and all that. Yeah. Okay, all right, so pretty reasonable. Yeah. Okay, so I'll ask you about some scenarios in a minute, okay. but let's just talk about what software. What do, do I have to use that uh, robotics solution? Uh, you can if you want to, but uh, the way we, we've designed Roborossi was not to use RDS. And the reason is we didn't want... What's RDS? RDS is Robotics Developer Studio. Okay? Yes. We have a fourth version out today. It's great for learning robotics concepts. Uh, but we also wanted to, to let developers know that you don't need a specific robotic operating system or platform to build robots. You can use Windows and .NET. And you can and a Connect SDK and a Canon uh, API to talk to the Canon camera. That's all you need. So just Visual Studio, the Connect SDK, and uh, the Canon API in this case. Yes, that's it. That's okay. all you need. So um, is Microsoft really serious about this robotic stuff? Are they investing a lot? Are you working with Microsoft Research? How's it all being done? Yes. So the division has been there for years, uh, since 2002 when we launched the first robotic developer studio. And Microsoft believes that robotics is the future. It's going to get there. Uh, just how are we going to get there is going to be the challenge. There's so many difficult problems yet to be solved in, in regards to navigation, uh, manipulation using hands and robotic arms, or even human-robot interaction. You know, the aspects of living with a robot are things that very few people have thought about. So we need to slowly get there, but we believe that that is the end goal. So we're going to continue to invest. We have about 25 people on our team today. Wow. 25. Okay. All right, good. So I want you to tell me a few scenarios uh, okay. because we need some scenarios to start okay. kicking us off. Uh, we can see it's not very expensive to get the device. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, give me some, some fun scenarios and some office scenarios. Okay. Office scenarios, let's start with the boring one first. Sure. Right? Office scenarios, the, the, the interesting one would be telepresence, uh, which is the hot item these days. Basically, so that's like uh, Hanselman who works from home, that correct, type of thing. Exactly. If you work from home and you want to be there and be part of a meeting or discussion, it's very hard these days. You dial into a computer, but you, you, don't, get, you don't feel that the person is there. 
But if you had a robot represent you, right. you could dial into the robot, maybe use Skype to control it and talk to people, and you can drive the robot in the office. That's one interesting scenario, right? You can talk to people. The second thing is for a tele uh, maintenance person, for instance. If I, to, if I have to maintain a couple of pipelines in different parts of the world, I would have to fly to every single one of them. But if you had a telepresence robot every single location, I would just dial in, do my stuff, disconnect, dial into the next location, disconnect. So I can work on maybe 10 different locations in the span of a day. Right? right. So that's a great telepresence scenario, an uh, office scenario. So, so Hanselman could put one of these little RFIDs on one of his interns, mm -hmm. have him work in Redmond, mm -hmm. and then have the, uh, have the robot follow him around everywhere. You could have that. You actually don't need the RFID. You can have Kinect because Kinect can sense an individual. He has facial recognition as well. So if you see that person, lock on to a person and follow where the person is moving. But if he's walking through Microsoft with people going everywhere, it'd be very easy to lose track of which one, wouldn't it? That's true. So then you need to add on some capabilities like maybe blob detection, color of the clothes detection maybe. But with RFID, you can solve that pretty yes. easily. Yeah. Or, or take a Microsoft tag and stick it to his back uh, yeah, and right. just recognize that tag. <laughs> another, right. another office scenario is um, maybe greeting. A greeting bot, like you walk into the office and the bot will come up to you, hi Mr. Adam, Mr. Kogan, you know, who do you want to meet? Uh, oh, I want to meet Locke, okay, he's in the third floor in this room, why don't you follow me? And then the robot turns around and just goes and you just follow the robot. That is an awesome idea, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that, that's okay. pretty cool. Alright, uh, any other office ones? Um, fun ones. Office is boring. The fun ones are things like uh, like the party photographers, one of the interesting scenarios. Uh, you could also do a butler bot where you can have so the, the party, the party one is just taking. Yeah, it just around. goes around the, the the party or an event, taking pictures of people, uploads it to your account on any cloud account if you want, and then you can take the photos and stitch it together to a video and share it with your friends. That's an interesting scenario. Another scenario would be a butler bot, you know, a bot that takes drinks and snacks and goes around your party and serving your guests food. Right. Yeah. And you could uh, you could hook in the RFID again. Yes. And uh, every time you take a drink. It, it would, recognizes, yes, yeah. and it would tell you how drunk you are at that point in time. <laughs> and then gives you a breathalyzer test. <laughs> awesome. You yeah. can do that too. Yeah, so those are some of the scenarios that you can do. Even games. Uh, you, you can have a robot play games with your guests. Trivia games, for instance. You know, or what we, we played in our friend's house last night was an 80s music, uh, 80s movie themes guessing a trivia game. You brought up a music and see if anybody can recognize what that TV is, TV show is. Okay, um, what about the smart tripod? Uh, yeah, there was, so one of our contests that we ran last year, the prize winner was he built a smart tripod. Basically a very intelligent dolly system that allows you to mount a camera on a tripod that moves on its own that you can program the path or keep its distance away from you. So instead of holding the camera out like this and filming yourself, you could have a tripod that moves and as you walk, the camera will follow and keep its distance away from you. Um, that's what the concept of a smart tripod is. Okay, so let me tell you, tell me if I've got another scenario correct. Mm -hmm. Let's just say I want to uh, watch my kids uh, how they're driving. Okay. Because they, you know, they could get out, they could be drunk, they could be driving poorly. Okay. If I wanted to fix a robot in a car, is that that's kind of the wrong thing because because yeah, yeah. you kind of want something with wheels, right? Correct. The concept of a robot is a device that autonomously moves right. and does something useful. In this case, it does something useful, but it's not going to move. You don't need it to move because it's stationary in your car, unless you're talking about a whole car, right? So, so what would I install in my car then? Anything, I mean, a webcam or a phone or a, a round table device. A round table. So we can get a round table, put it in there. So like, thanks for all those great ideas and it's great to hear it's uh, nice and cheap to get up and running. Yep. So the devs just need to get out there, get Visual Studio, mm -hmm. buy some connects, yep. and, and they could go a level beyond you by just putting four connects. All four. Why not? Yeah. Why not? That'd be interesting. All right. We'll yeah. see what happens. All right. Well, this is Adam Kogan signing off.